one of the things we've been super excited about since the Bears secured the number one draft pick was all the conversations we were going to have about draft rumors and innuendo and people talking secrets and sending notes and people sending pigeon carriers and ravens. And we will find out what the Bears are going to do late April. Will they trade down? Will they draft somebody at number one? How do they feel about Justin Fields? These are all things that we're going to be able to talk about here on the Sports Cubicle on WCPT 820 AM with the Marvel one Dan Marber, Devin Tingle, Paul Shavari, and myself, Mike Mercado. And today I wanted to hit on this that I saw on SI.com from Gene Chamberlain. Mel Kuyper Jr. sees possible Bears double down. And this is an interesting article because there's been a lot of you know, we've all had the conversation at this point. What we think, our theories, how we would handle where Ryan Poles is at this position with Matt Eberflus, Justin Fields, the number one draft pick in this draft, along with the most money in free agency. Now you also have a new president and CEO in Kevin Warren. So different vibes over at Hallis Hall. And how are they going to handle such a monumental moment? So we're going to break that down in just a second. Before we do that, I want to talk about huge monumental things. Huge shout out to the entire WCPT staff. Uh, we had this awesome mayoral event that they pulled off. We were all downtown Chicago as all the candidates for the Chicago mayoral seats were debating and having conversations about some of the big subjects in our city. And Patty Vasquez and Tata Jackson, Joan Esposito were the moderators. They did a wonderful job. Of course, the amaz amazing staff doing the audio stuff from Matt Cummings and, of course, our very own Devin Tingle, Paul Shivari, and Badalia here at the home base. Shout out to all the people who were working with me and with the amazing audience of WCPT and the really great staff of these candidates, the candidates themselves, it was a wonderful time. Check it out. It's on the WCPT Facebook page. You can check out the entire forum. Very proud of that. And it's an example of what we're going to talk about the Bears. We're taking advantage of an opportunity and making the most out of it. And everybody's stepping up. And it was a team effort, and I think it comes off from the broadcast itself, so I highly suggest that. Shout out to the entire team. You can check out the pictures over on my Instagram at Mike Mercado Media, and of course, the entire audio over at WCPT820.com and their Facebook page as well. And it's an example of leadership and people coming together and circling the wagon, and that's where the Bears are at this moment. That's where they have to get to this moment. And Mel Kuyper breaks it down, and I wanted to get into this article about where the Bears are, what they can do, and kind of the position they're at in this draft. So again, this comes to us from Gene Chamberlain over at SI.com. Mel Kuyper Jr. sees possible Bears double down. A year goes by, and you forget how much energy Mel Kuyper Jr. brings to the NFL draft every year and how much enthusiasm he can generate. The ESPN Dean of Draft Experts joined AM1000's Tom Otto and Mark Silverman on Thursday and fired up a big chunk of airtime with positive energy about where the Bears are picking and who they can get, even if he cost this a bad overall draft. That's what I want to get into in just a little bit. Quote, this is a draft where you better do your homework, do your due diligence, pick the right players, because this is not a deep draft, Kuiper told Waddle and Sylvie. It's not a strong draft. It's a weak draft. But it's not as weak if you're the Bears because they need a defensive tackle. They pick number one, and Jalen Carter is there. Kuiper has called Carter the player who should go number one to the Bears in his mock drafts and has stuck by this. Kuiper challenged some of the back talkers who saw Carter as a bit lazy at times and pointed out he even played with both knees and ankle injuries this season when he didn't need to because his draft status was cemented. Kuyper told Waddle and Sylvie, quote, he had an ankle and a knee in September, so you've got to give the guy a lot of credit for that. However, Kuyper saw an option for the Bears at the position if they decide to move down beyond the top four or five. He is very high on pit defensive tackle Kalaja Kansi. Go watch his tape. You gotta love this kid, Kuyper said. I mean, he is in the backfield before you could bleak. He plays hard. He's got the low center of gravity. It sounds like Kansi would be an ideal pick as a three technique. He is more the size of Aaron Donald at 280 pounds than Carter at 300 pounds. Kuiper had basically two other major positive points Bear fans will love. The first half is how they really could come away with a dream scenario. That would be a double trade down. It's the kind of far-fetched thing that doesn't happen often, but Kuiper sees this as a year it could and it all revolves around how Houston or Indianapolis rates the quarterbacks. Quote, and they saw we can't allow Vegas or Carolina or somebody else to jump to three with Arizona and get that quarterback. 
So we've got to go up and get that guy, Kuiper said. In that case, the Bears could commit highway robbery and trade down at number two or four. And then if another team back further needs one of the top three quarterbacks remaining, they could move back yet again to gain even more picks. However, it is going to be against the Bears' best interest if teams have all three of the QBs, Bryce Young, C.J. Stroud, and Will Levis, rate a similar like in 04 when Ben Roethlisberger, Philip Rivers, and Eli Manning came out, or even 2020 when Justin Herbert, Joe Burrow, and Tua were all strong candidates. Possibly the best Bears fans could get was how Kuyper thinks Justin is not someone who should be traded in this draft. To me, there is no quarterback in the draft better than Justin Fields. So, Lots to get into in that, but I think the big thing to take away from it is the mindset. Whether it's at number one, number three, number four, number five, they're going to get somebody for the interior of that defense. They're going to get somebody that's going to try to wreck some havoc and to build around against opposing quarterbacks. It also seems like nationally most people believe that Justin Fields is their guy or at least a quarterback within the contract that's worth investing in. And of course, this comes to us from Gene Chamberlain over at SI.com. Mel Kuyper Jr. sees possible Bears double down. He was on Waddle and Sylvie this past week talking about the Bears being at number one. We're here on the Sports Cubicle with the Marvelous One, Dan Marver, Devin Single, Paul Shavari, and myself, Mike Mercado. Now, I, this also really does put the validity of what I think the Bears are going to do. I do think they're going to trade down twice. I do think it's malpractice if they pick number one, even if it's Jalen Carter, even if it is Anderson. And here's the thing, right? Like, if they end up being Miles Garrett, Eric Donald, like, you get it right, but you can't allow a moment like this, allow another team's desperation, in some cases stupidity, to not take advantage of it. Especially when you have what you think is the guy who's going to lead your organization in the future in the most pos- most important position in all of sports, at quarterback, with Justin Fields. There's a lot that the Bears have to keep in mind, have to keep track of in this particular moment as we get closer to the combine as we get closer to free agency and then we get to draft night I do think they're going to trade down twice we have to see what happens with Green Bay with Aaron Rodgers a lot of dead dead money if he leaves that team if they cut him we have to see what happens with Derek Carr we have to see what happens with Tom Brady what happens with Tua there's still a lot of activity going on with these quarterbacks what happens with Brock Purdy if he wins a Super Bowl does that mean Jimmy G ends up somewhere else There's a lot of moving pieces right here. And all the Bears really need to do is stay put. Be patient. Let things fall to their place. Let people get desperate. Let people overthink things. That's what's going to happen. What the most interesting thing, a lot of these people in charge are smart. Even if they're dumb comparative to some of their contemporaries, like they're smart people in these positions. And when we get to draft day, Somebody gets nervous. Somebody gets desperate. Sometimes it's the owner. Sometimes it's the coach. Sometimes it's the GM. Depending on how the relationships are, what the dynamics are, who's pulling the trigger. But somebody's going to get to that moment. That Thursday night when Roger Goodell says the Chicago Bears are on the clock. Something's going to happen. And some team is going to get nervous. Now, I've always, and I had this conversation with Paulie off air, of what are you willing to give up for somebody like Bryce Young? Bryce Young could be the truth. Bryce Young could be a good player. Bryce Young could flame out. I don't know. It's the NFL. Anything can happen, right? Like, you got to be fair to all of it. He could become the next great thing. Like, anything is possible. But are you willing, without knowing the certainty of it, to invest and trade your entire franchise for the next three years to get that? To get to that point. To get to that moment. To get to that scenario. It might work out for you. Or are you a team like the Raiders specifically where you got a lot of veteran talent? Do you go after Tom Brady? Do you do something with Derek Carr where you move him for a veteran quarterback like an Aaron Rodgers, for an example? Now, all of this is just moving money. There's some things that can't happen that the cap won't allow to happen. But the Bears, right now, you can talk yourself into an anxiety-inducing panic attack where... In sports fandom, that is, in that realm where you you could see them kind of getting left out in the cold and kind of having to hold the number one pick or not getting the best value from it. You could see that there's a lot of people who don't think it's the most talented draft in the NFL that we've seen. But teams need young quarterbacks. Teams need young quarterbacks who are cost efficient, that are, are under the control of, of your salary cap that you could build around it. 
And at some point right now, yeah, you could look at all the scenarios where it doesn't play out well for the Bears. But come April 27th, right, there's going to be a team. It might be a team you don't see coming. It might be one of the obvious ones. It might be chalk, right? Somebody's going to make an offer to the Bears that they can't refuse. And I don't think it's going to be for Justin Fields. It's how many draft picks can you get back? And, you know, speaking of draft picks, this I saw this report come down. Some rumors have Alex Caruso being moved for two number one draft picks. That'd be very interesting. Two first rounders, that is, for the Chicago Bulls. That would be very interesting, especially since they just moved up in the standings back to a position of the play-in. But we'll keep an eye on that. But it goes to show the value of first round picks, what it sounds like. It's also equity, right? It's it's stabilization for your career if you're the GM. Where, well, we have this. I still need time to develop that. We can flip this. And that's also something we got to keep our eye on. If you're able to get this big haul, trading down twice, maybe you do go get Michael Pittman. Maybe you do find a way to get Mike Evans. Maybe you do find a way to go get a Devontae Adams. Maybe you don't have to overpay for DeAndre Hopkins. There's a lot of different ways this could play out for the Bears if they just allow it to play itself out for the rest of the NFL. They're in control. They're in control. So I don't want to see the Bears get desperate themselves. Allow somebody else to do that. Stay calm, cool, and collective. And I understand not trusting the Chicago Bears. Not to have the sentiment of, well, let's have them wait to be calm, cool, and collective. Because they're not a team that is like that. They're not the team that usually takes advantage of somebody else's nervousness or their impatienceness. They're usually the team that is not sending a trend. And that is what they're kind of doing right now. And I, you have to leave it open that this all blows up in their face. It's still the National Football League. It's still scouting. It's still the lottery, essentially. But you have to give credit where it seems at this point they are doing all the right things. They have said the right things. They have put the right teasers out. They have put the right qu- anonymous quotes out. The feelers, if you will. And if they continue to do this, they will get the best and most available assets allowed to them if they keep doing this. But I understand the old the Jerry Angelo days, right? The, the Emery days. Like, I get the feeling that they're going to bungle this. But it seems to me that this, this ownership, this franchise, has, for once, put the reins on people who are competent enough to get to do their very best. It may not work out. I mean, we have, you have to keep harping at home. It may not work out. It's the NFL. It's more than likely not going to. But if you do think that this team has its quarterback, that the foundation of the coaching staff is there, that the front office is there, that it's going to get to the right place before they get their new stadium at Arlington Park, then you have to believe in the calm, cool, and collective. You have to believe in being patient. There, there is no other way that this works out for the Bears than that. Nobody's desperate. Conference championship weekend. Not right now. They'll get desperate come February, March, into April. They'll get desperate when somebody gets traded. They'll get desperate when there's turmoil that we still haven't seen yet. We know the NFL, there's a story every day. Something's going to happen between now and when the pick is in, when the Bears are on the clock, that is going to change the shape of the NFL. It's just bound to happen. That is this league. But the Bears can only control what they can have control of, and that is their mindset and making sure they stick to the game plan that's working. You have to be flexible. You have to listen to everything. But as long as you're not the dumb team in this scenario, and that's all we're asking for, right? Like, that's not a huge ask to, hey, just don't be the dumb one, please. Just for once, be the smart team that does the smart thing and that hooks up everybody and the fandom and makes you the envy of the NFL. For once, I think that's the thing most Bears fans are looking for in this whole scenario is... They don't want to be the dumb fan base. They don't want to be the dumb organization. They don't want to be the team that people make fun of. They want to be proud. They want to have their fandom rewarded. They want to enjoy Sundays at the lakefront when they're freezing and frost-bitten weather. They want to be able to watch on Sunday other fan bases be like, I want to be a Bears fan. I'm jealous of that team. How many times do you watch Cincinnati? The Bengals. The Bengals. And are like, I am envious because they have Joe Burrow and they have Jamar Chase and they have T. Higgins. 
or you watch the Bills, even though, you know, it didn't end well for them, that they have Josh Allen and Steph Diggs. You watch Justin Herbert's arm. He may not win in the playoffs, but the talent's there. You know it's not, it's not on him. It's Brandon Staley, not the smartest or sharpest tool in the shed. And you want the Bears to be there. You know, is Justin going to be one of those dudes and that same type of architect? No. But you could tell he's a fun, special player, that he's different, he's unique. Other teams don't have that guy. Just like other teams don't have a Burrow or an Allen. They're all unique, but all unicorns in their own. That's why they're unicorns. That's why they're the special of the special of the special. The Bears don't want to be the number one pick. Bear fans don't want to be the number one pick, and they mess it up. You can't mess it up. You can't afford to mess it up. And that's all they want. They want to see it be competent. You may may not strike the billion dollar deal, but Bears fans will take five hundred million. You know, it's it's there's a lot of leeway this Bears this fandom, this loyal fandom is willing to give. And you see how much fun and people are having this conversation about rumors and trading down and trading for this receiver or this defensive player or this Hall of Famer, blah, 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 blah. At the end of the day, they just want in all the all the common denominator and all those rumors and all that conversation for Bears fans and everybody in the NFL is to not mess it up, to be smart, to be competent, to make big person decisions, big boy and girl decisions. And come through with them and them work out. And I think that's where Bears fans want to see Matt Eberflus, Ryan Poles, Kevin Warren, and the McCaskies come through for them. Come through for Justin Fields. Come through for the product that they are going to try to put on a silver platter when they open a brand new multi-billion dollar stadium. That's going to affect both Chicago and the state of Illinois. On so many different levels. It's a lot of pressure. They can't afford to mess it up. Bear fans can't handle another mess up. But all the fun we're having here, that's what it comes down to. I think that's the nitty gritty of it. And it's going to be something that we always kind of touch back on. Even after all the fun, we're going to have all the rumors of all the different scenarios that might play out. But they can't mess this up and they just got to be patient. But I want to know your thoughts. We're on Twitter at Sports Cubicle TV. Will the Bears come through? Will they draft at number one? Will they trade down? Will they double down? What do you think they will do come this free agency heading into the NFL draft? We're on Twitter at Sports Cubicle TV. Leave a comment down below if you're watching the video over at YouTube.com slash Mercado Airwaves Network. Check us out on SoundCloud, WCPT 820 AM. Enjoy the rest of the Sports Cubicle. It's the marvelous one, Dan Marver. It's Devin Tingle. It's Paul Shavari. I'm Mike Mercado.